Welcome back everyone. Following their fifth win in a row, the Lakers have gotten right back in the mix, with them now only being a game and a half back of the 8th seed, which many were doubtful about their ability to do. However, they're obviously not there quite yet, and if they hope to get there eventually, then they will need to keep playing the way they are right now, and then along with them getting a little bit of help too. In my opinion, the ideal playoff outlook for them would include Sacramento falling to 9th, and then the Lakers climbing to 8th at the very least, which I do believe is fairly realistic. If I were them, I would prefer a matchup with Phoenix in the play-in tournament over Sacramento. They simply match up better with them, and especially if they could get back a healthy cheer at Vanderbilt by that time. But again, all they can do here is what they can actually control, with that being the games in front of them. And they have a great opportunity to rattle off 4 more wins in a row here, even with all 4 of them coming on the road. And if they keep getting the version of Rui Hachimura that they have been getting, then I certainly believe that could happen, with him arguably being their 3rd or 4th best player at the moment. And we are going to talk about how he has done it, how he can maintain it, and then go over a brief update on Gabe Vincent. But before we get too far into it, I would like to invite you to check out our NBA Discord. If you enjoy talking about the NBA or simply the Lakers, then I guarantee you would enjoy it. Or if you don't have Discord, then feel free to follow me on Twitter, X, or whatever you want to call it to hear my thoughts on everything NBA related. There will be a link for both of them in the video description down below. But without further ado, let's dive right into it. And we'll begin by talking about the impressive past two games for Rui Hachimura. I mean, the guy is coming off a 32 point, 10 rebound game while shooting over 78% from the field and over 87% for three. I really don't think we understand how impressive that truly is. Not only did the guy have 32 points and only 14 shot attempts, but he did it while only taking four free throws, not committing a single turnover, and then grabbing more than double the amount of rebounds that he usually does. And where do we even begin with all that? Well, it might sound a bit odd, but I think we should begin by talking about his rebounding. Believe it or not, Rui Hachimura has 24 combined rebounds over their past two games. And for reference, that amount of rebounds would typically take him over five games to collect. But with them playing without one of LeBron or Anthony Davis for each of their past two games, Rui Hachimura knew he had to step up. And again, not only by scoring more points, but by being more physical down low. And I think it's safe to say that he accomplished that goal too. I love the way that Hachimura runs the court, but he does tend to have a tendency to leak out rather than box out. And while it might not show up anywhere on the stat sheet for him, it has led to their team giving up more points, with a whole bunch of them coming from offensive rebounds. But when Rui Hachimura actually commits to doing it, he can really help them out down low. I think we often forget that he's 6'8 with a 7'2 wingspan, and not to mention that the guy weighs over 230 pounds which is pretty much the size of a modern day NBA center for some teams. Now I'm not saying that we should expect him to put up a double-double every game, but I definitely would like to see more of this from him. I for one think they benefit more from a physical Rui Hachimura compared to a fast break orientated Rui Hachimura. With that in mind though, I do understand why we don't always get that version of him. With reason number one being that he often tends to play more on the perimeter when both LeBron and Anthony Davis are healthy. And unless they want to make LeBron take on tougher perimeter matchups, then there's really nothing they can do about it. Now I would like Rui Hachimura to be a bit more aggressive going after rebounds, but again, there are definitely times when he's simply too far away from the rim. And at that point, it does make sense for him to leak out. Not every time, but I do get why he does it sometimes. But I think a happy medium here for him would be grabbing between 6 and 8 rebounds per game. That would be a big difference compared to the 4 rebounds per game that he's averaging right now. And even with him playing well on the perimeter, it's definitely not impossible for him to get back in there and help rebound, shown by the way that Jared Vanderbilt plays with them. And Darvin Ham talked about the importance of Rui Hachimura's rebounding. I suppose the some of the focus on Rui, just the shooting night with the seven threes, but second straight double digit rebounding game. Yeah. Did you challenge him specifically? To, Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been on him all year about rebounding more, being active on the glass, being an active defender. Um, and not leaking out, you know, he has a tendency to want to take off running, assuming someone else is going to get the defensive rebound, and, he, and it stops him from participating. But he's, and to his credit, you know, he's heard us loud and clear. I'm not the only one telling him this. His teammates, the other coaches, um, are all delivering the same message, and you know, he's responding well to it. Again, a more physical and aggressive version of Rui Hachimura is very important to their team. Rebounding might often go overlooked, but we're finding out right now how big of a difference it can make from a guy that does not usually make a big impact there. But even apart from rebounding, I would like for Hachimura to keep being heavily involved in their offense. 
In my opinion, they have been doing a great job of getting him involved early. If you take a look at their past 10 games now, Hachimura has been averaging 11.5 points in the first half alone, more than Anthony Davis, and only second to LeBron on their team. And not only that, but he has been getting nearly 8 field goal attempts per game in the first half alone too, really telling you about the priority that they have put on him, which has without a doubt helped him find the rhythm. I don't think it's by coincidence that Hachimura has been shooting nearly 62% from the field and over 45% from 3 throughout that time frame, and that early rhythm has led to him being able to maintain that during the second half, with him shooting over 55% from the field and 50% from 3 during the second half. He might not be as involved throughout the second half, but he has been able to maintain that efficiency from the rhythm that he gained earlier. And like I have been preaching for a very long time now, that is the perfect way to make your role players more reliable in clutch moments. I mean, if you make them be spot up shooters all game long, then how can you truly expect them to be in a rhythm during the fourth quarter? Simply put, you can't. And Darvin M has been doing a really good job at not only getting Hachi Murr involved early, but even D'Lo and Reeves lately too. And overall, I think they have finally found a good balance between them. And even without Anthony Davis playing last night, LeBron only attempted 14 total field goals, really telling you about the trust that they have been putting in guys like Rui Hachimura. Which, in my opinion, they have certainly earned at this point too. And it might sound pretty obvious, but what they have to do to maintain this, both from a team and individual standpoint for Rui Hachimura, is simply not forget what got them here. And that's the combination of everything that we talked about. I know a lot of the talk tends to go to LeBron and Anthony Davis, but let's not forget about the role players here too. Not only keeping them involved, but pushing them to play up to their potential, even if it's something as small as consistent rebounding from Rui Hachimura. But with all of that in mind here, let's finish up by talking about Gabe Vincent. I know we have gone over a bunch of updates on the guy, but we finally appear to have a definitive one, and thankfully it's the one that we have been waiting for too. There might have been talk about him not being able to come back during the regular season, but that appeared to have been false, with Sean Shirani of The Athletic confirming that Gabe Vincent will in fact be returning during their upcoming road trip, and likely even be available to play on Sunday night for their matchup in Brooklyn. Which really begs the question of what should their rotation look like when Gabe Vincent comes back? And well, that will obviously depend on who you ask, but I think it will look like will include the 5 members of their current starting lineup, along with Dinwiddie, Prince, Hayes, and then yes, I do believe that Gabe Vince will be back in that mix too. And with the playoffs coming up, I think they'll be looking to trim down their current rotation, with both Reddish and Christie likely being a casualty of it, not entirely removing them from the rotation in every game, but likely making them more matchup dependent, which will in fact mean them getting a few DNPs here and there. I mean, with Spencer Dinwiddie playing great defense for them, and legitimately filling the role of a 3 and D player off the bench, they don't really have a big need for Reddish anymore, and especially if he's not fully healthy. Now I do think there will be a spot for Jared Vanderbilt when he comes back, but I think that Reddish and Christie might get taken out in favor of Gabe Vincent, and I'm not entirely against that either, though it will depend on how he looks. But with all of that being said, what do you guys think? What have been your primary takeaways in the performance of Rui Hachimura lately? And then how do you think the rotation should look like and then will look like with Gabe Vincent back? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and hit that notification bell to never miss out when I upload a video. But as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.